Okay, so it's working if we have a user. It's not working if we don't have a user. So when we don't have a user, what I want to do is make another function. As you can see, I love making functions. And we're going to make a function called ask for name. Okay. This one right here, ask for name. So if the current user is no, we're going to ask for his name. And we're going to start by doing class list at showing. So we are going to start by adding um, the class list showing to the form. All right, cool. So we see here and we refresh. Let's kill this motherfucker. And there we go. So when it loads, it just shows me what is your name because current user is no. So that means that he's going to ask for my name. This means it's going to be here. Okay. Good stuff. All right. So now we say ask for name. So what's going to happen when he asks for my name? What I want to do is I want to say, what is your name? I want to say Nicholas. And when I press enter, this means when I submit the form, that's why I put it on a form because I want to detect when the user presses enter. All right. If somebody presses enter, look what's going to happen. You see, it's weird. Look, it's just like the website refreshes, you see, because by default, when you submit a form, she is going to try to go somewhere, right? Okay, so that means that what we need to do is kill that event. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say form at event listener, fuck, at event listener. And when something submits the form, I am going to handle that submission of the form. And I want to say function handle submit. And this function comes with the event I taught you before. So now here we say handle submit. Okay. And that means that what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something that I didn't teach you before, which is a prevent default of an event. Usually when an event happens, it happens on the root. So it happens on the form. And this event is like a bubble in a kind of way because it goes up and all the other things react to this event. When the event submit of the form happens, what happens is that the event goes all the way up, all the way to the document. And as you can see, the document goes somewhere else because the event, the event gets there. Look at that. I'm going to press enter and it's going to go somewhere and it's going to refresh the page, which is what is programmed to do. What I'm going to do is prevent the default behavior of that event by using event prevent default. And as you can see, for example, default behavior will be to do this. And when I press enter, you will see that the, the text on the input is going to disappear because that is the default behavior is going to down is going to reload. Now, when I prevent the default, look at what happens. I'm pressing enter and it's not working. I don't want to, I want you to think that I'm lying to you. I'm pressing enter and it's not working. Okay. Because the event is prevented and that is something super cool. Now, this is step one. We need to prevent the default. That is part one. Now we need to get the current value of this fella. And we already have the input here. input we already have it selected there and i don't know if you remember but the input can have many things for example he can have type he can have placeholder he can have class he can have whatever so if for example i want to change the placeholder i can just do this and i will set the placeholder but also what i can do is get the value value so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to const current value equals input value. And let's console log it. Current value. We refresh this one, we refreshed. And now here I am going to submit with an enter. And I'm getting the current value on my console. All right, awesome stuff. Now, what I need to do is not console log it. 
But now what I need to do is now that I have the value, I am going to call the function again, paint greeting, because the function paint greeting is going to remove my form is going to show me the greeting and is going to put the text that I sent him. All right, so now let's see what I'm going to do. Very simple is going to be paint. Fuck me, I'm just my hands are cold. Jesus. Paint greeting and paint greeting requires text. Okay, remember that. So I'm just going to give it to him. Which text is it? Is this one current value? Let's see how it works. We save, we refresh. What is your name? Nicholas. Hello, Nicholas. Sweet. Now I refresh and there is a problem. The problem is that this thing doesn't remember me. And that's because we haven't saved it at all. Okay. This is programmed to load the name, but it's not programmed to save it. So let's make one more last function function save name and this takes a name or a text it could be text okay and what it's going to do is just very very simple it's going to say local storage that set item user local storage and the text that's it finished let me change this for a bit And we'll see. So now when somebody submits, I am going to paint the greeting, but also I am going to save the name. With the current value, this one, the one from the input. Okay, let's do it. So I'm here. Let's go to application. Local storage is empty. Oh, by the way, local storage, it works based on URLs. So for example, uh, this website cannot load the local storage of the what Facebook puts there. Okay, just like this website doesn't have access to the local storage of momentum, as you can see. Okay. All right. So now we refresh and now we say Nicholas and now we click save. And as you can see now, current user is Nicholas here. So next time I come back and next time I refresh, Nicholas is there. So if I want him to ask me for an again, my username, I will have to kill this. And then it will work again. And I will have to say Nicholas again. All right, so it's working. Awesome stuff. So this is how you remember the name of the person that is with you. Good job. I will see you on the next one. Bye bye.